Thank you, David. I would not say that I'm an irrigation guru. I just know a little bit about how to manage irrigation systems. And uh, thank you all for attending. Thank you for inviting me to this for, for, for this uh, for today classes. Uh, what I would like to first introduce myself. So I'm Andre da Silva, an assistant professor and extension vegetable specialist here at Auburn University. Uh, my focus, uh, I will tell you, it is uh, turned for the vegetable. Uh, for vegetable production. However, I, I do a lot of research and collaboration with uh, on irrigation and with like Dr. Ed, Edgar Vinson, uh, Dr. Uh, Melba Salazar, Dr. Sushan, who in our department working with strawberries. Uh, water quality is very important uh, for strawberries. So I also collaborate with Camila Rodriguez on food safety. And uh, irrigation is like important for strawberries because you can use irrigation in two ways for strawberries, to apply water, but also for frost protection. And that's the first stop of my conversation with you guys today is what are the folks of strawberry, of irrigation in strawberries? So these strawberries are most often and should be always irrigated by a drip tape line. That drip, line, that drip tape line will come under the, drip, uh, under the plastic mulching so you can have a protection of your fruits on the directly contact with the soil and the drip tape will apply graded precisely in the root zone. However, you can see fields of strawberries with overhead irrigation as well. That overhead irrigation is often used for uh, frost protection. So as you can see in the following pictures here, you have drip lines, you can have a single plant in a drip, uh, a drip line per single plant. Sometimes you can see a drip line per two plants. It's gonna depend on how you are working in your farm and how you wanted to set it up. Sometimes you can have a better irrigation. Uh, you can save fundings or save you money. Uh, just lay one uh, drip line per bed or you can lay two drip lines per bed. However, if you lay one drip line per bed, you're gonna to need to have your longer irrigation events. While if you just have, if you have two drip lines per bed, in a double bed, you're gonna have like low, less, um, you can gonna run your irrigation system for a shorter period of time. You can also have a drip line in bare ground. Like I said, uh, plastic mulch is much, is, it's important for food safety aspect of strawberry production, but you can also plant it in the bare ground. So here are just example of how the drip lines are laid down. You can have also uh, two drip lines in a single bed, or you can have a single, or you can have a single drip line in the bed. Overhead, on the other hand, like I was saying, is using for frost protection. Here are some example of irrigation in the strawberry fields. And it's very common in, um, in Florida fields for them to use over, uh, Florida growers to use overhead for frost protection. Although here in Alabama, we have seen more and more growers covering the strawberries, which would be more recommended and I would say less expensive uh, for doing row, uh, putting the, row, the covers. Um, remember that using irrigation events overhead application for frost protection is an option for you too. Uh, but let's switch gears for like over, I don't wanna talk much about frost protection. I wanna talk about more the apply water of on the strawberries for production side. So we're gonna be focused more on the drip irrigation, okay? So let's say it's how to apply water for strawberries. So when you are applying water for strawberries, what I really would like to see from our growers is don't apply water to, because you think you're guessing that the plants need water or you go to your field, you kick your soil dirty, come up, I see, oh, my strawberries need water. Or you think, oh, I irrigated every day to uh, half an inch or uh, one fifth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. Uh, don't, don't guess how much your crops need water. This is a video of a, a corn field, but it also can be applied for a strawberry. One of my first recommendations for managing irrigation in strawberry would be apply water according to the crop water demand. You can calculate it by easily multiply a reference evapotranspiration by a, by a crop coefficient which we also call ETC in this equation on the top of this slide. So understanding what is this ETC, you need to understand how water is lost by the environment or by your system. So water can be applied to your crop by rain or irrigation events. In the strawberry, it is applied to the drip line. 
water is penetrating the soil, it's lost by evaporation from the soil or is uptake by the plants and lost by transpiration of those plants. In this case, our strawberries plants. When you combine the soil water loss by evaporation and the soil water loss by trans and the water loss by the soil by evaporation and water loss by the plants by transpiration, you have your evapotranspiration. I don't want to get in details a little bit much, uh, much about uh, details on the equations, but I would like to show how complex it is so you can trust on what I'm talking. So this equation, it's very complex and it's shown right, right here, the reference evapotranspiration. I don't want you to understand what it is, but I want you to understand that when we calculate our re reference evapotranspiration, we are talking about temperature, we are talking about solar radiation, relative humidity, wind speed, your location in the earth, and many other uh, factors. The reference of upper transpiration, I should say that it's changed by location to location. So it's not that, but it's not that far from what you have in one location to another. So for you to understand your system, you can use several weather stations. In Alabama, I would recommend you readily use from Auburn, Auburn University Mesonet. But our Auburn University Mesonet sometimes don't have weather station uh, in the borders with Georgia or in the borders with Florida. So you can also use other locations like the, the University of Georgia weather uh, network system or the University of Florida weather, uh, uh, weather network system. There you're gonna find all the, all the information for, for you or they already calculate reference evapotranspiration. And once you have that information, you can just simply multiply by the strawberry crop coefficients. That ETO is calculated daily, so you can find how much is being, how much water is being uptake by the plants, or I mean, how much water is lost by your system daily. So let's say here you have your case uh, initial in the season when you just transplanted your strawberries to your field. That value is 0 0.4, which means your plants not require much water. But as the plants grow, it's 0 0.85. When the plants are already fruiting, it's 0 0.75. So what you're gonna do is calculate how much water is lost by that environment or by that system and calculate how much water your system or your crop, in this case, is strawberry required. So let's give an example so you're gonna understand. Let's say that if you are a grower in North of Alabama, your plants, your strawberry plants are right now flowering. So your, uh, your KC is in the mid of the season, so 0.85. And you identify that according to the Auburn Masonet, your reference evapotranspiration for that day was 0 0.09 inches. So what you're gonna do is calculate your strawberry evapotranspiration by multiply the reference times the KC. So 0 0.09 inch times 0 0.085. You need to apply 0 0.08 inches in that day in your drip line. Basically, that's what you need to you need to do for your for identify how much water you need. Remember, drip irrigation is a system that uh, on this calculation you are not accounting much. Um, that you are not account at all actually how much water is lost by the efficiency of your system. So because drip tape is a very precise irrigation system where the efficiency of this irrigation is about 90 to 95%, I would add on top of this 0.08%, uh, 0 0.08 inches, another 10 to 10 to 5% uh, percent of water. So this way you are account how much water is being pumped to how much water is being delivered to your root zone. If you have, a, on the other hand, if you have a sprinkler irrigation, which is not very common for uh, strawberries, you would account for about 20 to 10% uh, of water loss of, or of efficiency on top of your evapotranspiration. So let's move on. Let's say that if you are not doing a daily irrigation event, you are doing every other day irrigation event using So go for your strawberry, same location in North Alabama, in the same growth stage right now. We are in the mid of the season. Our plants are flowering, they are reproducing. They need to produce more fruit. We need to increase our yield. So we're gonna multiply by the 0.85 um, coefficient for strawberry. And we, but we identified that was a warm day and our uh, ETO for the last uh, three days was 1.3 inches. How much water should we apply? 
we come back for our simple calculation of multiply our reference evapotranspiration by our uh, crop coefficient. You're going to multiply 1.3 inch by 0 0.85. We need to apply 1.10 inch for seven days. In this case, we are accounted that we are using seven days of our evapotranspiration or our reference evapotranspiration. So how much water are we going to apply per day? It's 0 0.16 inch per day or 0 0.32 inch every other day. If you are doing a three days irrigation event, every three days an irrigation event, the only thing you need to do is add another 0.16 to the 0 0.32. So this will, it means you're gonna apply almost a half inch of water every three days for that period that you calculate your reference evapotranspiration for strawberry. So what I wanna say here is that the evapotranspiration don't need to be daily calculated. It can be calculated for the entire week. That's gonna facilitate your life. I don't want you to go there and check it every day and apply it every day. You can calculate for the entire week or you can calculate for the entire two weeks and then apply how much water you're doing there. As long as you are accounting for how much water is being lost by your system, you're gonna be good on your irrigation schedule. And I will ensure you, this is better than gas. So I could talk much more about using soil moisture sensors to, uh, ir to conduct irrigation events in, um, in a strawberry, that's going to be the same principle for the vegetables. Um, we have heavily talked about that in my, our last, uh, in the last episode of our vegetable school. And uh, you can find different sensors for you. You just got to understand your soil and apply how, instead to apply how much water was lost by your crop, you're going to apply how much water was lost by your soil. So that's a, just a different principle, but with the same precision that you have on the crop water demand. So the take message that I have for you guys today, and I will be open for questions, of course, is that strawberries can be drip or sprinkler irrigation. We give preference drip so you can apply water precise for the root zone, while sprinkler irrigation is okay, but it's more recommended for frost protection. Drip irrigation is more efficient, but sprinkler, yeah, like I said, can be for frost protection. And using the crop water demand to calculate how much water or to determine how much irrigation volumes can help you to properly manage water. Because let's say you have a rainfall event like we are expecting, or we had this, this two days ago, and we had yesterday, and we have, we're gonna have today. You should account for that in your calculation. And your reference evapotranspiration will tell you how much water was lost and how much water is entering your system. So this way you can minimize the extra water that you would be applying in the following days. Otherwise you will just think, oh, I need to apply water next week because we have a heavy rainfall event. But how much water we had, the crop evapotranspiration can tell you. So that's the message that I would like you guys to take from today. And uh, I'm open for questions. I would like to be short today in this, uh, in this conversation because I would like me be more open for questions to you all.